This is a woman who had a really a rough issue. She's down in the South Bay. This is a woman who, by nature, I know I know the family a bit. She's a very smart, well-organized woman who could run Apple Computer. You know, if they nominated her, she could probably run the probably run the company. She's just very fast-paced, fast-thinking, well-organized. She works. Her and her husband works. She was going to her job, and it was six in the morning. So the lights are on. She was kind of pretty much awake but maybe not a hundred percent awake and then she all of a sudden sees lights on the road so she's going one way and the other lights are going the other way when the more she drove she finally realized that the lights were in her lane so it was somebody going the wrong way in her lane and they head-on crashed right into her. So this is a woman who had a head-on crash, and her car was completely totaled. It was thrown up on a little ridge. She was completely brain damaged from this. And all of a sudden, she went from being able to run an Apple computer to not being able to even think. So 911 was called. Police came, and they thought she was substance abuse. You know, that maybe she was drunk or something. Maybe she failed the walk test because she was in such terrible shape. They handcuffed her. So this woman can't even think, is handcuffed, and they take her off to jail. And her husband's out of the country. She's sitting there, and she, she's got a traumatic injury. So they have grown kids. So the kids came and rescued her. Husband flies back. The next thing is she's at the hospital. And what happens is that they put her through all the evaluations and the scans and the testing. They said she had a traumatic brain injury, and she had a severe concussion. So there we have this poor woman in very poor shape, and she has nothing left of her that she had. They, they did tons and tons of work on her. They put her through lots of drugs, physical therapy, everything they could do. And this woman's brain is totally destroyed. It's not like her normal brain. One day I get an email from her husband who said, we've got a real emergency here. And he said, we only have a few days. And he said, could you work us in and work with her? I didn't know all these details. They shared this with me once they came. I was in a really busy time. Time. Our ministry is really busy. We're a new ministry, but I do about 30 ministry events a month. We're just running all over the place, and I don't have much free time because otherwise I'm in meetings and helping people out like she needed help desperately. I went ahead and set them up the next day, and what it turned out was that they said, you have three days to get her well because we're leaving the country and we're going to 10 different countries. Okay, I've got three days, and this woman is severely brain injured. What am I going to do with this? I made as much time as I could. She wasn't at all normal. She went from being really fast-paced, active person to now she can't even drive a car. To do one thing like turn on the key or put her foot on the gas, is, you know, that's a 20-minute ordeal. Like, well, what do I do and how do I do it? And she has to think about it for a while. So she just couldn't do anything. She's having nightmares every night. She can only sleep for about two hours. And she's hallucinating during the day. And she's having blackouts. And she's a just a total mess. Husband said, I want my wife back. He said, my wife's completely gone. He said, I want my wife back. So I said, oh, I said, I'm happy to do this. I said, it's going to take a lot of, I'm going to have to do a really major kind of prayer into her brain and into her nervous system and into her circulation. I said, there's a lot of things I want to pray over for her. I spent a lot of time on her brain. And when I finished her brain, her husband had a complete freak out. He didn't want me to leave her brain. He went into a panic attack and he said, I don't want you to go anywhere except her brain. And I said, I've got to. I said, I've got to do these other prayers for her. I said, I have no choice. I promise you 100% she will heal. I literally told the husband that and then he released me and he said okay go ahead and just do what you need to do but he wasn't even going to let me do it he was going to clamp me down so I couldn't even pray the way I knew I had to but I said look I promise you she's going to heal. I prayed for her for the rest of the time that I had and I kind of pushed things aside and I was going to run late for a meeting but I just really had to do my best do what the Lord wanted and guided me. Well at the end she gets up she looks at me she said you know I feel better she said I actually do feel more lively and more energetic and then they took off and I got an email from the husband the next day and he said it worked the prayers you did work he said she slept well that night and she woke up in the morning and she's full of energy again and he said we don't need you <laughs> he said you've done your job <laughs> he said we got two days to get ready for this trip he said see you later when we get back and after that I was in touch with friends they said, she's doing fine this is all God this is nothing to do with, with Susan Richards